Hey guys, it's Louise here and welcome back to my channel. So today I have something very exciting to share with you guys. I can now answer some of your questions about Star Wars Outlaws. I was lucky enough to have the chance to be flown out to LA to play four hours worth of gameplay. And I'm going to tell you, I had so much fun exploring the world and seeing what Outlaws has to offer. Reminder that this is a pre-release version um, and I was playing on Xbox. We had the chance to explore two areas. One is Toshara and the other is Kojimi. Toshara is brand new for Outlaws and Kojimi is already in Star Wars canon. We had three hours worth of gameplay on Toshara and one hours worth of gameplay on Kojimi. Toshara is a much bigger map so it was really really good to have that little extra bit of time to explore. So originally I was going to make this into one full video but as I got further into it I realized that the video was going to end up being too long, so I'm splitting this into two different parts. The first part in this video will be talking about accessibility options, and the second part in the next video, I will be talking about my opinions, my thoughts, and I'll be answering some of the questions that you guys give me on Twitter. So stay tuned for that, and if you're interested in the accessibility options, stay tuned for the rest of this video. While I didn't get the chance to look through the accessibility menu myself, there is an interview online which goes deep into the accessibility options that they will have in the game. So I'm going to be talking over that and I will also link the website in the description for anyone who wants to read over it as I'm just going to be doing a, a short little breakdown. So as someone who personally makes use of accessibility settings because of different issues that I have, I was very excited to discover what settings we were going to get for this game and I'm excited to share with you guys that this game is going to be accessible for as many players as possible. They've designed this in a way that they want as many people as possible to be able to play regardless of their reasoning. So there are a lot of visual settings, audio settings, control settings, combat and stealth settings, navigational settings, all of it, you name it. So to name just a few of the accessibility settings that there will be in this game, when it comes to visual settings, we're going to have options to change high contrast settings. There is also colorblind accessible options, visual intensities, which include screen shake, depth of field, motion blur, etc. There will also be a view angle FOV configurable separately for default and while aiming. For audio, the game is not reliant on audio at all, so you can play the game entirely without audio and you will still get the full experience of the game. There are your usual settings such as subtitles with backgrounds, speaker names, colours, directional arrows, along with audio descriptions for cinematics, which has an optional narrated voiceover describing what is happening visually. There is configurable dynamic range for control over the volume difference. There is positional audio cues which show the direction of nearby opportunities or loot or side quests. And there is plenty of sliders for audio mixes and just volume sliders in general for the master, for the music, for effects, for voices, etc. There are accessible control options as well such as auto walk and toggle sprint. There is keyboard and mouse remapping, there are controller presets. The game supports both keyboard and mouse, controller and virtual keyboard via windowed mode. Sensitivity is individually adjustable, so you can change the sensitivity of your mouse, controller, camera look, hip firing, speeder and your ship. There is camera inversion, there is configurable dead zones, adaptive trigger intensity, you also have motion aiming and auto align cameras, vibration strength and control and there is one other option that I find really useful personally as someone who has very bad joints and struggles with use of my thumbs sometimes um, you can change holds to presses so instead of holding a button you can just press it and there also is the option to change button mashing to holding so those are both options within the game which I am going to make a lot of use out of. I am very appreciative for that personally. Stealth and combat we get onto. We have multiple difficulties with one of the options being a very forgiving or sorry they've specifically said extremely forgiving story setting which is very useful and no one should ever be ashamed of using the easiest difficulty because you're there to play the game. You're there to immerse yourself in the story. Regardless of what difficulty you play as, you're still experiencing the game how you enjoy it. 
and there's absolutely no reason to shame other people or to feel ashamed for choosing the extremely forgiving difficulty setting which honestly i wouldn't be against using myself i have had to do that in a lot of games so i am very appreciative for that option and especially for people who are just casual gamers and just do want to enjoy the story or for people who maybe just struggle to get the understanding or don't have fast reaction times which that is possibly me <laughs> So there is also individual difficulty settings for enemies, for player health, and for your wanted difficulty, which I really like as well. So you can customize the game to play however you want to play. There is aim assist. Uh, like I said, there's the option to hold rather than repeatedly press to fire your blaster. Different play styles are supported, which comes through unlockable blaster fire modes. There is an adrenaline rush feature, which allows targeting of enemies with low precision and time pressure. They also have stealth assists, which has threat sense, awareness icons, and visualization of enemy footsteps, which is on by default, but can be turned off. So a lot of these options do have that where they are there by default, but if you don't want to make use of it, you can turn it off. So you don't always have to go through every single setting and change everything to be accessible when the game is already accessible by default, which is really nice to see. The options for navigation and traversal, you can fast travel. There is options for safe climbing so you don't accidentally fall, which is going to be very useful for me. There is auto ledge grab. You can avoid objects automatically on foot and on speeder, which again, I'm going to need to make use of. There is health regeneration for environmental speeder damage in world map markers which can be toggled on permanently same with in space you can turn off damage from colliding with objects you can turn off stuns from ion weapons so you can just enjoy your time in space you don't have to worry or stress about every little obstacle that's in your way there is also obviously the option for flexible combat style so you get strong aim assist pursuit mode to adjust view and speed to follow targets there's also motion sickness options which is very helpful and I will be making use of that myself. The mini games also have individual difficulty settings for timing, precision, level of visual assistance for each mini game. Nyx also has additional vocal and visual cues for nearby enemies or for loot for anything you really need to know. It's also helpful to know that in this game it is very very important to make use of Nyx not just for mission sick but also for accessibility so nyx can go and get things for you he can pickpocket enemies he can attack he can distract enemies he can pick up weapons and bring them back to you which is also very very helpful you have menu narration for menus and hud color blindness presets clear default fonts large and smaller text options you can change the stylized titles with regular font increased contrast options Controller winders are also on the HUD and everything is configurable. So you can control how often elements are shown, whether to show the compass, the map orientation, center dot size, and whether to add a plain contrasting background behind all HUD elements. This game is made for so many people to enjoy and to have fun with and to experience. So all this information comes from the audio director, lead gameplay designer, and presentation director from Ubisoft. And again, I will link this in the description so you guys can read it in full. You can read the full interview and all the options that are there. And I hope that this has been a little bit helpful for you guys um, in knowing the kind of options that you'll be able to change and adjust to your own personal settings. So that will be the end of this video. Please continue on to the next video if you want to hear my thoughts, my opinions, and hear the answers to some of the questions that I got on Twitter. So thank you guys for watching and may the force be with you.